Welcome to my series on the Leslie 147. A 147 and 145, not much difference. On the schematic, they're the same. So all the tutorials, all the video insight I provided to date applied to both units. I decided to do the speaker measurement. While I have it in my shop, I might as well do that. I want to know a little bit more why the Leslie sounds like it does beyond the standard answer. It's a Doppler. You rotate the speakers, there's a Doppler effect. There's more to it. What else is behind the scenes that we're not, we hear but we can't see and we don't understand. So I've documented that in this video. The Leslie unit has a high and low pass audio filter. They're LC circuits, not RC circuits, and there's a fundamental difference. Let's review what a low, high and low pass filter is in this case. In the Leslie, there's an LC circuit. On the left a part of the screen, the signal goes in through the inductor, the capacitor is connected to ground, the node point where they connect together then is where the frequency filter, as after it's filtered, comes out. The R in the diagram is the resistance value of the inductor, which is about 52 ohms, does not affect the calculation significantly. What needs to be point, pointed out is these curves have a spike. On the right, a high pass filter goes in through the capacitor and the inductor takes it to ground at the node point. This is what you're probably familiar with. That green line has a nice knee to it. It bends. That is an RC filter. Very typical in any tone stack. This is not the same typical curve. You'll see a spike there at around 600 Hertz because it's an LC filter, not an RC filter. In this slide, I have the low pass at the top, high pass at the bottom. I superimposed with the red line the high pass filter on top of the low pass filter. So you can see the two different spikes. One's at around 600 Hertz, the other's at around 1000. The average value between the two gives you a crossover frequency around 800 Hertz, which is in the published specifications for the Leslie unit. The phase chart where they cross over, this is interesting to me. They overlap just a little bit. One's in phase, one goes out of phase, and that overlap between the 600 and 1000 indicates generally there is scooping going on. It could either be bumping up or bringing down the tone, but there's scooping involved. They're not precisely at the same frequency. It's that way by design. What are the high and low pass filter paths? Not always intuitively obvious, so allow me to go through this for you if you don't know. In the next chart, so here's the low pass. Here's the low pass filter. The signal comes in along the red path through L3, the inductor, and then the capacitor connects to ground. The node point where the capacitor and inductor are tied together is the filter point for the base speaker. So low pass filter there. What, the signal that may be going through 16A and L2 at the top is muted at this point. The dB of filtration, if you call it filtration, is well below 10 dB. It's phasing out. In the high pass, it's the other path noted in red. Signal comes in, goes through 16A first, and it connects to the node point with L2 that sets the frequency path and filter for the high pass filter to the treble speaker. Those are two paths. So the question gets down to, there's got to be some overlap, right? I mean, one is not completely running independent, you know, event A, event B, and that's absolutely right. And that's the reason I did a speaker measurement. I want to know what happens when a frequency goes from low filter to high filter. I measured that. I measured the low frequency filter first, the base frequency, base speaker. It has a back EMF about 35 ohms at 52 hertz. Very characteristic of a bass speaker. 
It has a 10 ohm DC nominal resistance, but the nominal impedance is 20 ohms at 400 hertz. There are no cabinet reflections. Perfect. This is a very standard graph. No news here. But the treble speaker is very different. It has a 13.5 ohm DC resistance value, 24 ohms back EMF at 300 hertz. That's neat in that this is a perfect high frequency speaker. In this case, the back EMF is where the speaker hits nominal or its natural resonance frequency. This, in this case, is at 300 hertz. The nominal frequency is at 15 ohms. The schematics for the unit says that the speaker that you hook to the amp should be 16 ohms nominal. Not 10 ohms, not 13 ohms, but at frequency, at 400 hertz. It should be around 16 ohms or more because we're dealing with a tube. There are cabinet reflections here. You'll see the two spikes in the data. As I turn the rotor of the bells around, those two spikes or peaks, they moved slightly back and forth in subsequent measurements. And I go, it's a cabinet reflection. It depends on how it's rotated inside the top of the cabinet and it changes where the peaks are. It's a cabinet reflection. It's a characteristic of this amp. I put them together and measured them again. The overall back EMF is at 42 hertz or about 37 ohms. The combined DC resistance is at 10 and a half ohms, but the nominal rating is 24 ohms. So if you were to put a dummy load on this unit, you would need to put at least 16 ohms DC, but you could go as far as 24 ohms DC, which would stress the unit just a little bit more, but that's where it's operating mostly. Let's look at that top left graph in a little bit more detail. So I've enlarged it for you so you can see what's going on here. So 37 ohms at 42 hertz is where the back EMF is. That's its natural frequency for the combined speaker system. Between 800 and 200 ohms, the base frequencies pass pretty much unimpeded. At 650 hertz and above, there it's almost flat, as you can see from the graph. What's interesting is what's in the middle, between 200 and 650 hertz. It, there's more resistance at those frequencies. In fact, at right around 600 hertz is when it has the most resistance. It is scooping the frequency. What I find interesting, and in fact, it's just because there's a Doppler effect, you know, Doppler effect, the, the tremolo that the unit produces. They're also separated out. Bass, muted, midsection, treble. It's like they try to cut it just a little bit. That puts more difference between those two frequency ranges. It really makes a very different uh, contrast in sounds as the tremolo and the Leslie does what it does in the Doppler effect. The mid-range is cut out about 8 dB on average between 200 and 650 hertz. So then I went to the sound check and I imported an average sound wave through sound check. That video has been published. I always like sitting down with the customer first, figuring out what do they like, what do they don't like, do I need to make any adjustments. The guy was happy. He played and I took this reading off at the bottom. So at the top is the reading of the speaker ohms, the nominal resistance. I was looking at the frequency response. At the bottom of this slide is the real-time spectral analysis of one of the sound clips. And what you'll see on the graph is the red graph is the peak. The blue line or the white line as you'll see is the instantaneous frequency at the time I took this cut out. 
Again, the red being average. Now the green line, I went through to help pull your attention to, this is basically what the Leslie fil filter's doing. Uh, below 80 hertz, it's somewhat flat, it's down. It passes frequencies up to the 200 hertz range. It scoops down slightly in the middle and then the treble frequencies are free to pass and they do the normal characteristic bend curving over as you go up in the frequency spectrum. There is a scoop there. So that dichotomy is not only measured, not only calculated, but when you do the real-time analysis you also see it and you actually hear it. That helps give it its characteristic sound. Again, that scoop measured in real time is about 8 dB and the static measurement was indicating 8 dB as well. That is the Leslie unit of 147, the measurements and the calculations and how it operates. I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching.